Hi there, it's the Common Magician. Good to see you again. I'm on vacation, so I have some time to spend with you and to uh, evaluate some ideas that we've never talked about before and maybe uh, dig deeper on some ideas that we have talked about before. I want to try something with you. I'm thinking of a number. I wrote it down already. Um, it's a six-digit number. It's a b big number. It begins with a one, so it's 100,000-something, right? Um, and I just, I just want to try this experiment. It, it would, I need you to, uh, to select a number, but what I want to make sure is that you don't pick something that um, is a common answer, something that I would predict, right? I want to make sure that you really feel free about this. So imagine you've got the numbers, you've got odd numbers, even numbers, single digit numbers, two through nine. As I said, it begins with one. So two through nine, uh, would, you, would you like to pick out the odd numbers or the even numbers? The odd numbers, okay? So again, you can change your mind here, but uh, we'll take out the odd numbers and we think of this continuum. We got, uh, 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 you have the lower numbers on this side, higher numbers on this side. I'm just going to move my hand. Tell me when to stop. So you say right there, right? So we have three, five, this looks like seven and nine, right? Seven. But I want to make sure that you really do pick something that you want. You can stick with that. But you can pick one of the others as well if you want to do three or five or nine. I, I, it's, it's whatever you say is what we do. It's not one of those kinds of tricks, right? Whatever you say is what we do. You want to stick with that? Okay, so seven, all right? Now, if, if you would, by the way, you know, if you'd picked the even numbers, it would have been a different, you know, place. We went with the odd ones. Uh, seven, do you think of, um, do you think of the seven as being seven or 70? Because it matters. I mean, you can pick 70. Okay, so 70-something. Um, as I said a second ago, if you'd have picked the even numbers, it wouldn't have been 7. It would have been 6, right? would have been over there. Um, so, let, you know, let's just kind of expand this out. Let's go with that. So you have 7 and uh, a 6 would have been there, and 2, 4, 6, so uh, 8. So let's say 76. So we have a 7, we have a 6. Uh, and again, if you had picked differently, we would have been, we, we'd be in a different place entirely. Um, Seven and six. So what, what do we get if we, we need more digits? So how many are left? We need three, at least three more. So what do we get if we add up seven and six? What's seven and six? Seven plus six is, was that 13? Right, so that's uh, uh, one, 100,076, right? 130 something. We need one more digit in the end. Um, we'll take, we'll take uh, one and three, 13. We'll add those. What does that get? Four. Okay, so... We have 1,076, 176,000, and 134, right? That seems to be what we've come up with. And again, I just, to, just to remind you, you could have picked evens, you picked odds, you could have selected any number that you wanted, right? Two, two choices could have been different. Um, you know, the tens position for the 70, uh, um, you know, the six to go with it. It's where you selected. The, 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 this could have been anything. We didn't do any weird math or anything, right? We didn't, I didn't tell you to multiply by this and divide by that and to add your birthday. And, you know, we didn't do anything like that. This is just a big number, hard to conceive of, but we came up with this. Could have gone, a, you know, any number of nearly 200,000 possibilities there. My wallet's been sitting here the whole time. If you take a look inside, I have one uh, piece of paper that I've kept. One piece of paper, and I wrote this down earlier. You can see 176,134. Okay, so a lottery prediction. I was thinking about this <clears throat> because of a comment I had made on a, one of the previous videos where I was talking about adjudicating uh, effects really more on the presentation than on the effect. This is something that everybody's heard a thousand times and everybody says it. It's kind of, feel, sometimes it feels like it's one of those things that people say, um, magicians say in their lectures and whatnot, but is it really true? You know, I believe it is true. I think the presentation matters more. With these kinds of lottery effects, I had mentioned Nate Staniforth in one of the last videos. Um, he has a great lottery trick. I mean, it's, it's probably the best, 
right? And you've all, you've all seen this video. If you haven't, look him up. Um, he does a Powerball kind of lottery prediction on a stage and people just call out numbers and he has it, the wallet sitting there in the open kind of like this and you take it out and it's the number. Uh, it's all the numbers and it's very clean as well, right? Someone else reads it. Um, and if you've seen David Blaine do that same trick, uh, that's Staniforth's trick. So Nate Staniforth was the consultant on that David Blaine special back in the mid 2000s when he did that. Um, great trick. Um, it's hard to conceive of a way to do it so cleanly, though, because when you think about method versus presentation, uh, the method does matter quite a bit. You can't just kind of deny that. You can't say, well, it's all in the presentation. You need to have a clean choice because what? There's like one of three possibilities, actually one of two possibilities and then a hybrid. One possibility for this method-wise is that all of the selections are free and then you have to make, somehow, make the thing and ring it in. That's one one way to do it. Again, apologize. I've got a I've got a throat lozenge in my mouth. I've got a cold. I'm getting over. So, it's not the Rona. I've I've fortunately not not had COVID, but just bear with me. Um, you could print the thing. That's one possibility. The other possibility is you could force the numbers. All of the numbers. All the numbers could be forced, um, which is problematic when you get to presentation, right? So the first one gives you the most flexibility on presentation. On the other side, when you force everything, you have to get extremely creative with your presentation. Otherwise, things start to look like a math trick, right? Um, and we know math tricks. And math tricks can be presented such that they don't look like math tricks. They can be hidden and disguised uh, uh, very well if you're creative. I would recommend um, uh, Mark Paul... I think I've mentioned his uh, Penguin Live lecture before. Any one of his lectures. Mark Paul is, is fantastic because he he apologizes over and over and over again whenever he talks to, to magicians about math tricks. And in that Penguin, his Penguin Live lecture, he talks about using math tricks uh, for mentalism. And he, he says, I'm sorry, these are all math tricks and nobody wants to use math tricks. But the point he makes is that you can dress up math tricks quite well and make them feel very free so that they don't feel like math tricks, right? And and, and, and even knowing what he's doing uh, to some degree as you watch him do it, you don't get you don't really get the feeling that it's a math trick. You get the feeling that there's free selections going on. So I recommend that Mark Paul Penguin Live lecture, any one of his lectures, really great stuff. Um, uh, concerning this concept. But that's something you have to deal with. You have to jump through a bunch of hoops to take a math trick and make it look like something that's very free and open. But then there's a third option, which is more of a hybrid, where you have real free selections and you're using some disguised math tricks to make something that looks very free and open because it's kind of buried in there among free and open selections, and what you end up with is multiple outs. The ability to have several outs that you can uh, pick from, uh, and it seems like you could have had, you know, a trillion variables there. Right? So that's that's the third one, and that's the one I'm most interested in. The one, uh, I, I carry around a raffle ticket in my wallet, and I've had different ways to try to get people to that number of you can just use a toxic, you know, calculator thing. And it's not that people know that. People really don't know that. There's this thing among, among magicians where we think that everybody knows these things and they don't. I got news for you. Nobody's looking up magic secrets. There's this idea that people are looking up magic secrets. Nobody's interested in magic, right? You's, you and I are a, neat, a very niche kind of group of people. Um, when people watch Penn and Teller's Fool Us, not many people watch that show. It's on CW. It's in, it's in um, you know, it's a solicited program. It's, it's, on, it's on an off network. It's not on one of the major networks. So when people watch that show, the few people that do, 
you got two kind of people. You you have two kinds of people. You have you have magicians that kind of know everything that's going on, and they watch it because they appreciate that. And that's how magicians enjoy magic. They don't enjoy it necessarily by being fooled all the time. You know, that's nonsense to think that that's required. Um, but then there's another group of people which, which watch the show when it comes on, and they enjoy the show, and they are fooled, and they don't go looking that stuff up. They just don't. They don't care, right? They're just watching it, the program for the program. So nobody looks this stuff up. Nobody knows the toxic calculator force, right? Or the concept of a force calculator. Because that's one way to do it. Another way is to use separate apparatus. You can use a deck of cards and you can, um, you know, get a free selection from a deck of cards which points to a string of numbers or something. That's a great way to do it. Or dice, you know, various kinds of dice tricks. Any, you know, any one of the number forces that you see in like Animan. Um, a lot of magicians like to talk really big about psychological forcing forces, right? Forcing numbers. I think there's a lot of bark and no bite in that, though. There's, a, you know, I'm not one of those people that says that psychological forces never work. Because whenever you say that, the people that really advocate for them, especially the people that don't do them well themselves or never do them, they'll say, oh, no, your problem is that you don't believe that it works, right? They do work. Um, there is a time and a place for psychological forces. But the fact of the matter is, is that they don't. They don't really work that great. The, the probabilities in psychological forces are significant, but they are, they are a plurality of opportunity, not a majority, most of the time. So, um, you know, these various kinds of number psychological forces or card psychological forces, you only can put so much weight on that. And you need to be more surefire than that. So they're very good to use in, in specific opportunity where they can kind of lead you down a path um, with many outs. Right? And, and you have to be willing to not take that path when the force doesn't land. When the probability, it's not even really a force, when the probability doesn't land. So how can we be more surefire than that? Well, it comes back again to equivocate, something we've been talking about a lot here uh, lately. So um, I'm going to show you just one, just this, these are concepts. This is not something that I recommend you necessarily do, but these are concepts. And then after we talk about some of the concepts, we'll talk a bit about presentation, which is the more important thing. But you really do need to determine a method, I think, initially before you get into the presentation of it all. Um, so here, here's what's happening. You use some equivocate to pigeonhole a couple of free selections that give you some multiple outs. So what I just did with you at the beginning really only had four endings. There's only four endings to that whole thing. It seems like the spectator makes several decisions, particularly at the beginning, which could have given you many more variables, but there was really only four ways that that could have gone. I begin with the equivocate question about, uh, uh, well, actually, before that, I begin by eliminating a number. I say, I've got a six-digit number, my really big number, right? It's hard to conceive of big numbers. We're going to try to come up with something systematically here. Um, uh, but it begins with one, I'll tell you that. What I've done is I've taken one of my digits and I've eliminated it. So I'm just arbitrarily taking it out, and I'm saying that it begins with one. And that's a good one to use because one you can't really do a lot with. One doesn't change very much when you add it to itself or multiply or something like that. We're going to try to avoid math a little bit, do very minimal math. Uh, so I say, I'm thinking of a six-digit number begins with one. If you'd had, um, you know, uh, one more digit, you could do like a phone number or something. But just to, for the purpose of um, demonstration, six-digit number begins with one. I'll tell you that. So you've got odd numbers and even numbers, two through nine there, single-digit numbers. Uh, what would you like to pick out, the odd numbers or the even numbers? So this is an equivocate question. What would you like to pick out? Pick out means use, or pick out means throw away. Extremely ambiguous question. I like pick out. What would you like to pick out? You can use that for almost anything, right? What would you like to pick out, the odd numbers and even numbers? No matter what they say, um, you're going you're gonna to pigeonhole into the odd numbers. So if they say the odd numbers, you say, okay, let's take out the odd numbers we've got here on a continuum, you know, 3, 5, 7, 9. Uh, and then you do this thing, which is in itself an equivocate. But we're not going to use it that way. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, uh, bury my first equivocate question in absolute free choices. Right? That's very important, I think, whenever you use equivocates, that you have to go 
the best way to use equivocate is with multiple outs. So we already have we already have our situation set because it doesn't matter what they pick, uh, three, five, seven, or nine, <clears throat> those will dictate the out. Okay, so I do this uh, continuum thing and it doesn't matter where they end up. I say, it looks like it's right about here, but just so you feel like I haven't made you pick that, you can change your mind. Would you like to do the three, the five, or the nine? You know, whatever. Uh, doesn't matter what they pick. The next step is to say, um, I might have actually gotten this a little bit out of order in my one take shot here. Um, the next thing to say is, um, do you think of this number as a single number or do you think of it like as uh, 70 or 50 or whatever? And so they say they pick three. Do you think of this as three or do you think of this as like 30? And they'll say whatever. It doesn't matter what they say. Okay, what matters is how you're going to talk about it from that moment on. If they say, oh, like 30, say, okay, um, there's a, you know, you could have picked even numbers. I just want to remind you, you could have ended up in a completely different place here, right? If you'd picked even numbers, it wouldn't have been a three, it would have been a two. So you're going to bring in the number lower than the number that you're using. So three, two, uh, five, four, arbitrary justification, something I talked about before when talking about equivocate. Arbitrary justification. I'm using their choice to very arbitrarily create more outcomes. Okay. So three, and I say, you know, if, if you would have picked the even numbers, you'd have been at the two. So let's think of that, right? Uh, uh, 32. So you have now one, three, two, 100,032. Now, if they would have said, I think of it as a single digit number, just don't say 32. You say, so Two, right? You would have, it would have been a two. So in fact, let's go with that, right? This is where you ended up. So you have three and two, right? So based on your decision, we have uh, several numbers here. And we need three more digits to see how this talking can work, right? This does work, by the way. Um, you know, this seem, you might feel skeptical about this. Note, too, that we haven't done any weird math. This is really just decisions that they're making. We're not adding and subtracting and multiplying and doing anything like that. Now, let's do a little bit of math, though, okay? So uh, I say, well, let's take these two numbers here that you picked. You have the three, you have the two. No, they didn't pick the two. I'm, I'm suggesting that they did. Let's take the three and the two, and we'll, if, if you add those up, what do you get? Uh, what is that, five? All right, so we have uh, five. There's just two more digits left. Um, let's see, what can we do with that? Uh, What's uh, 5 plus 3 plus 2? What does that get us? 10, right? 1, 0. So that, that's it. I mean, this could have been anything. You could have picked anything. You could have picked any number to start with. You could have picked another number, right? These are very randomly. And this is, this is one of out of nearly 200,000 possibilities. So what we've done is we've used really only one legitimate choice to create a track. But we have um, redundantly used their choice to get more outcomes. So in the end, our number is 132,510, right? And I have an out for that. So I have an out for that. If that's what they would have picked, uh, I would have gone, I would have gone to this pocket. So I've got four of these in there, right? 132,510. So it's all about, it's all about not being too convoluted relying on very rudimental, fundamental, basic choices that they're making and making those few choices, one or two choices, mean way more than what it should. Okay, so that's one tactic. Um, now, presentationally, this, this idea could be, you know, expanded and pushed forward. What do you put it on? Could it be a lottery ticket? I mean, that would be interesting. Um, now, if you're like me, I never played the lottery, and people that I'm around know that I wouldn't play the lottery. Got nothing to do with it, so I can't really do that. I could just do this sort of thing. It could be a raffle ticket. It could be um, it could be a receipt with a total or something like that. Um, you could have a, a hundred dollars something, and then you know, in the in the sense, you have two more digits there. Could be a UPC number on a product. It could be a lot of things. Could be. Uh, you know, a credit card number. There's a lot of possibilities there in terms of what kind of outcome gimmick you make. Um, but presentationally, I think the key here is to really focus on the the improbability and the odds that their choices 
which were free and were their choices, uh, unmanipulated, right, would come down to an exact figure that is sitting in full view. I think this really matters, sitting in full view the whole time. But anyway, some ideas about that. Now, some people, again, will really gripe about this kind of method, but really that's all you've got. Unless you can print the ticket based on the free selections, unless you have a way to do that, um, you're going to have to do things like this. And I think equivocate is very useful. Now, I'm going to talk about another possibility here, because if you do want to do kind of the Powerball sort of possibility, you want there's there's a number of ways to force from free selections, a bunch of two-digit numbers. Um, one concept, which will give you six outs, and there's a little bit, and you could tweak this a little bit maybe to give you uh, a couple additional outs if you think you can push it that far, or use some arbitrary justification to get a little bit more diversity in the number set. Um, but one idea is to use kind of a, a section of three freely chosen numbers. If you have three freely chosen numbers, you can get six two-digit numbers from that without doing any math at all, just by mixing up combinations. So uh, if you take a look at this little idea here, if you have a continuum of uh, one through nine, you have one, two, three is one option. This is just demonstrating the math of this. One, two, three is one option. Two, three, four is an option of three. Uh, and this is a limitation, right? You say it has to be these three numbers. I'll get to that in a second. Um, another one would be three, four, five, and then four, five, six, and six, seven, eight, seven, eight, nine. Uh, and you don't loop it around. It's just a continuum. So if you have like one through nine and you say, go ahead and stop, uh, I, I, I have you at five. Would you like to stay there? Would you like to go somewhere else, right? They say, oh, I'd like to go to three. Okay, three. We'll take the two digits around it, two, three, and four. Now I've already put myself into one of these outs. Okay, so I have three numbers. I could arbitrarily justify, say, let's take uh, the numbers right around it, let's say two and four. Now let's, let's, let's skip one, say five, two, two, uh, two, three, and five. As long as you have a way of describing this arbitrarily that seems uh, spontaneous, right? But here's the idea. Once you have three uh, two-digit numbers, or, I'm sorry, three digits, three numbers, let's just take, let's just take um, four, five, and six. From this, you can actually come up with six separate two-digit numbers. So the way you do this, and you have to make sure that you do this consistently the same way, and it's it's got to sound spontaneous. You could say, well, from these, you can come with a bunch of pairs. You could say uh, four and five, right? Uh, you could do uh, four and six. You could do uh, five and four and five and six. So you have these two digit numbers. And then you could do six and four and six and five. Right? And this starts to look like, especially with spacing in between, even though it's very monochromatic, there's only three digits being used, this can start to feel like, uh, you know, a, a Powerball-y kind of, you know, trillions probability sort of, selection. And all the numbers, the three numbers seem freely selected. So you can come up with ways, you know, maybe in equivocate to have people narrow down to odd or even numbers and pick one number so that you have a fixed set of multiple outs um, and, and play it this way. And you're not doing any math. You're not adding. You're not subtracting. You're not multiplying. You're just taking things that were freely stated and then coming up with um, uh, expansions on that theme uh, to fill out the ticket or whatever it is you're trying to create. If you want to make this less uh, chromatic, uh, it's just a simple matter of putting one other layer of equivocator there to get a different number, right, and pigeonhole them into a number. It might be a simple matter of adding the three digits up for one of these end numbers on the end, right? You could say, you can see what you can do with this. Um, so we don't have a, all the same numbers. What do we get if we just add those numbers up? And then you'll get another set of numbers that you can tweak. As long as you keep the same system and you arbitrarily justify what you're doing in the moment and it feels spontaneous, uh, you can have completely free number selections that, that, that feels you know, authentic. 
this is where presentation really matters because the method requires that your presentation feel natural and good. Okay. On the other hand, if you are able to just print the ticket, if you have the capacity to do that, if you can do that, you know, if you can thumb, if you can thumb write it or pocket write it or something like that, nail write uh, a prediction. You need to be careful about not making it too perfect. That was the uh, um, the Penn and Teller variation that, you know, I remember Penn said it was just too perfect. There were no flaws in it. That was his code saying, this is only one way this can be, man. Like we, like, you know, it was good. You took something small, you made it big, but it kind of suffered because there's really only one way to do this. And we know what you do. You have to be doing that. Um, that's the issue. That's why presentation really, really matters uh, if you are doing the kind of perfect solution where you have completely free selection. You need to have the thing isolated in full view or be in a place where technology couldn't help you out or there wouldn't be the, the, the thing that comes out on the end is not something that could have easily been created right in the moment. There is an old effect of, with a credit card where the credit card gets punched, you know, the number is freely selected and the number uh, shows up on the credit card right there out of the wallet, you know, and it's like, this is extremely elaborate because in the end, the credit card has to be stamped after all the free selections are made. And that is is absolutely what's going on. And you have to find a way to get that in and into the isolated stage area. It is too perfect, but there's just no explanation for how it could be done because you can't just stamp a credit card, you know, uh, very easily right on stage. So um, you have to have the kinds of limitations that keep the perfect method from being obvious. Okay, and that's why presentation matters. So quite a few concepts here we're talking about uh, related to the, the lottery kind of prediction. Um, and it's such a great effect that if you can do it, it's one of those propless kind of things. You have to have your revelation, of course, but it's like one of those things you can just carry on you. And with the right method uh, that doesn't rely too much on elaborate setup, you could, you can, you know, just be asked to do something and do it right there and then, right? You can, you can show this um, just with you and your wallet. Or you in a pocket or whatever, you know. Anyway, lottery prediction ideas. And and this is not the exhaustive definitive explanation of how to get numbers. Again, there's a lot of math tricks that can be dressed up. Mark Paul, check that out. Um, uh, you can take some of the ideas <clears throat> that I'm talking about here and expand them out and come up with your own line of questioning to pigeonhole what feels like something that's very free and make it um, make it highly predictable. Uh, using ambiguous questioning and arbitrary justification. So anyway, some of you may like this, some of you may hate it. You'll just get off as whatever. Okay, I'm just telling you what's on my mind today. So good luck with that. Happy magicking.